there. Today I'm gonna make a video about my main laptop, which is this Toshiba Satellite 4000 CDS. Now I'm gonna make this a two part video. This is gonna be the first part, and I'm gonna talk about the hardware. First off, let's start in the front where we have our indicator lights. We have a power light, well, a mains connect connection light, which indicates when the charger is connected. A power light, which turns on when the laptop is on and turns, turns orange and breathes, has a breathing effect, effect when the laptop is in suspend mode. A battery charge light which turns orange when the battery is charging and turns green when the battery is charged. A hard drive activity LED which is green and a media access LED which also works with the PCMCIA slot and the USB slot, so whenever you're using a PCMCIA, uh, PCMCIA sorry, um, device and you're transferring data through it, it also works with that. On the right side we've got a 1.44 megabyte standard floppy drive and uh, I think this is a 16x CD-ROM drive just a reader, not a not a, a burner. Right here we have two PCMCIA type 2 slots or one type 3. If you use the bottom one you can use it as a type 3 but if you use both slots you have to use them as type 2 slots. They used to have a cover right here, a little door which was removable and I have removed it and put it in a safe place because I used these slots for expansion. We have a locking mechanism. Let's see if, it, if this thing can focus. Focus. Hey. Focus. There we go. We have a locking mechanism which locks the PCMCIA cards. And we have a Kensington lock right here for just locking the laptop in, into. On the back, we've got upside down ports. We've got VGA up to 1024 by 768 at 16-bit color. A parallel port, serial port, a cooling fan right there, an infrared port, a USB 1.1 port with a little door, a PS2 port which can be used with a Y adapter so you can use both keyboard and mouse at the same time on this port, and a barrel plug for the charger, uses a really thick center pin it is 15 volt center positive which was the standard for Toshiba laptops for quite a while on the left we've got a volume potentiometer and yes it is actually a potentiometer so you can set in software you can set the volume to 100% and then regulate it with this which is something great because it means your your sound card is outputting at its maximum bit rate at all times and you just regulate the volume with a real potentiometer then we have a headphone output or if you turn the potentiometer all the way to the max position you have a line output we have a microphone input and a line input and we have the power button right here which has a little protective plastic cover this is the button itself and a reset button recessed reset button that's 
let's open it up. Right here we have the keyboard, which is a really nice, quiet keyboard. And it is actually uh, the best laptop keyboard I have ever used. It has really good tactile feedback. You can feel the bump. You can feel the tactile bump in the keys. And it is not mushy whatsoever. You can bottom the keys out. And you can notice how you bottom them out. That is really nice. We have a pointing stick right here with two buttons. Uh, a third button for the scroll for scrolling would have been really welcome, but in this era, it, well, it doesn't exactly scrolling didn't exactly matter. So there we go, really good. It has a green tip right here. It could be replaced with a with a red standard uh, tip from a. From an IBM ThinkPad, from the track point, from an IBM ThinkPad. Keyboard layout is, well, it's okay. This key should be here, it's normally here, and it is a Spanish keyboard as you can see by the Ñ and the Sedilla. But the keyboard layout is nothing, It's it has nothing wrong, it has long shifts. Caps lock keys a small, tap keys a tad, a tad small. I would have liked a better, a better tap key on there. And uh, what else? Yeah, this key is moved somewhere else, it's moved over here. And we have an NC. Enter key as opposed to an ISO ISO standard key, enter key, which well I don't mind at all, but some people prefer the ISO key instead of the ANSI key. We have a really nice layout for the page up, page down, home and end keys right here. I really don't mind this at all. We have the Windows key right up here instead of down here because down here is the function key. So we have Windows key, we have the context menu key, pause key, print screen, and a lot of our F keys right up here. When used with combined with the function key, we have a locking mechan lock that works these work only on the under windows except for this one which is actually hardware and this one this is the lock key this is for the power saving mode i have no clue what this one is for this is for the beeper volume the pc speaker volume and this one is for switching in between the internal and the external monitor. This is the function lock key. This is the number lock key, which enables a number a number keypad, numeric keypad on these keys right here, as you can see by the labels. And we have this, which I have no clue what it is. Again. On the lid, we've got stickers, of which only this one is original, designed for Microsoft Windows NT and Windows 98. We have a Pentium inside uh, sticker that I put in there, and a Powered by Debian sticker that I put in there, which gives you a clue of what software I have installed. And we have a really crappy uh, 12 inch, I think it is 12 inch diagonal, 8, 800 by 600 display, passive matrix display, so it has a lot of ghosting, the contrast is really bad, and you have pretty much, also I have, I forgot to mention, there is a contrast potentiometer right here in the lid, which you have to constantly adjust depending on the task 
you're using your computer for because this screen has washed out colors it has all kinds of flaws the only thing that I like about this screen is the anti-glare coating it's really really good now uh, internally we have 160 megabytes of RAM which is the maximum this thing takes right here we have an Infineon 128 megabyte stick which is the maximum it will take and internally we have 32 megabytes soldered into the motherboard we have a 300 megahertz Pentium 2 upgraded from a 233 megahertz Pentium 2, it came originally with that, but I have upgraded it, and I will upgrading it, I will be upgrading it soon with a 366 megahertz Celeron. And I have expanded it a little bit. I have these two cards right here, these two PCMCIA cards, which I use it with, which are this, which is a wireless G card, which supports WPA and WPA2. This is what I use for connecting to the internet. And I have this little USB 2.0 card, dual port, that I also use for connecting storage devices and other kinds of, you know, everything that needs USB. I plug it into here instead of the USB 1.1 port not because of any compatibility reasons but just because this port is a little bit recessed and most things don't reach that far so I have to use those ports in there this card also has a little 5 volt input barrel plug right there as you can see for for actually providing one amp on each USB port so you can use it for charging devices and yeah that's about it next part the software hope you like this video don't forget to you know comment like subscribe whatever and see you next time